It's the 40th year since the children of Israel came out of Egypt. Most of that generation, the adults at least, have died in the wilderness because of their rebellion. They refused to enter the land at the beginning of that journey and so they have perished in the wilderness. But now it's time to move towards the land. And when they come to the border of Edom, they request permission that they might walk along the main road and enter the land the easy way. But the Edomites refuse to let them. They're in the wilderness and there seems to be no water and they complain, why should they die? Moses again provides water from the rock, which is the Lord Jesus. He strikes the rock, being angry with the children of Israel. And because of that, he will not be permitted to enter into the land. Now Aaron has died, his garments having been transferred to his son Eliezer, the new chief priest. And the children of Israel mourn him for thirty days. Numbers chapter 21. The king of Arad, the Canaanite, who dwelt in the south, heard that Israel was coming on the road to Atherim. Then he fought against Israel and took some of them prisoners. So Israel made a vow to the Lord and said, If you will indeed deliver this people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. And the Lord listened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities. So the name of the place was called Hormah. Then they journeyed from Mount Hor by way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us out of the land of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water. And our soul loathes this worthless bread. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. And they bit the people and many of the people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned. For we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he may take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And so it was, if a serpent bit anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. Now the children of Israel moved on and camped at Oboth, and they journeyed from Oboth and camped at Age Abaram, in the wilderness which is east of Moab, toward the sunrise. From there they moved and camped in the valley of Zered. From there they moved and camped on the other side of the Arnon, which is in the wilderness that extends from the border of the Amorites, for the Arnon is the border of Moab, between Moab and the Amorites. Therefore it is said in the book of the wars of the Lord, Waheb in Sufra, the brooks of the Arnon, and the slope of the brooks, that reaches to the dwelling of Ar, and lies on the border of Moab. From there they went to Beer, that is, the well where the Lord said to Moses, Gather the people together, and I will give them water. Then Israel sang this song, Spring up, O well, all of you sing to it. The well the leaders sank, dug by the nation's nobles, by the lawgiver with their staves. And from the wilderness they went to Matanah, from Matanah to Nahaniel, from Nahaliel to Bamoth, from Bamoth in the valley that is in the valley of Moab, to the top of Pisgah, which looks down on the wasteland. Then Israel sent messengers to Sion, king of the Amorites, saying, Let us pass through your land. We will not turn aside into the fields or the vineyards. We will not drink water from wells. We will not go by the king's highway until we have passed through your territory. But Sion would not allow Israel to pass through his territory. So Sion gathered all his people together and they went out against Israel in the wilderness. And he came to Jahaz and fought against Israel. Then Israel defeated him with the edge of the sword and took possession of his land from the Arnon to the Jabbok, as far as the people of Ammon, for the border of the people of Ammon was fortified. So Israel took all these cities 
and Israel dwelt in all the cities of the Amorites, in Heshbon and in all its villages. For Heshbon was the city of Sion, king of the Amorites, who had fought against the former king of Moab, and had taken all his land from his hand as far as the Arnon. Therefore those who speak in Proverbs say, Come to Heshbon, let it be built, let the city of Sion be repaired. For fire went out from Heshbon, a flame from the city of Sion, it consumed Ar of Moab, the lords of the heights of the Arnon. Woe to you, Moab! You have perished, O people of Chemosh. He has given his sons as fugitives and his daughters into captivity to Sion, king of the Amorites. But we have shot at them. Heshbon has perished as far as Dibon. Then we laid waste as far as Nophar, which reaches to Medeba. Thus Israel dwelt in the land of the Amorites. Then Moses sent to spy out Jazer, and they took its villages and drove out the Amorites who were there. And they turned and went up by the way to Bashan. So Og, king of Bashan, went out against them, he and all his people, to battle at Edrei. Then the Lord said to Moses, Do not fear him, for I have delivered him into your hand with all his people and his land, and you shall do to him as you did to Sion, king of the Amorites, who dwelt at Heshbon. So they defeated him, his sons and all his people, until there was no survivor left him, and they took possession of his land. My name's Arthur, and thank you for joining me as we've shared this chapter together. Numbers 21 As it's time for them to move into the land, opposition rises. We've seen that the Edomites would not allow them to pass through. Now the Canaanites attack them, but God gives Israel victory over the Canaanites. Nevertheless, the journey is hard. They're in the wilderness, and they continue to complain against the Lord. And so he disciplines them with the fiery serpents. And when they acknowledge their sin, they ask Moses to pray for them. We have sinned. We have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he may take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. The Lord does something very remarkable which is picked up in the New Testament. Moses makes a serpent of bronze and lifts it on a pole. And anyone who is bitten, if they look at the pole, does not die. But if they refuse to look at the pole, then they will die. Jesus said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so they continue their journey. They've gone east of Israel. They're going around the land of Moab and the land of Edom. They request permission from Sion, king of the Amorites, to pass through his land. But he not only refuses permission, he comes out and tries to wipe them out. And so God gives victory to the Israelites and they destroy the kingdom of Sion. Sion had taken land from Moab and the Israelites now occupy that land. The land had been taken from Moab because Moab had turned away from the Lord and was worshipping Chemosh. So now the Israelites actually have land east of the Jordan River. And they progress their journey. But the king of Bashan, which is further north again towards the Sea of Galilee, rises up against them. And the Lord gives victory against King Og of Bashan. As the children of Israel come, the enemies rise up against them but the Lord gives victory. The pattern remains today. God's enemies rise up against God's people. As Paul said to the Galatian Christians, through many tribulations we shall enter the kingdom. It was not an easy journey through the wilderness and through the hardships, but the Lord was with them. They gained the victory. They occupied the land. God's people will share in the triumph of the Lord Jesus Christ. But there's still some way to go. 